Auburn able to get past USC Upstate with six runs on the scoreboard. They will rest until tomorrow and await the winner of this one in the regional final, this elimination game between Oregon State and Jacksonville State. The winner of this one will face SC Upstate. Along with Jenny Dalton Hill, I'm Tiffany Green, and well, Laura Berg, she needs a lot of enthusiasm from that lineup to produce runs. McKenna Areola leads things off, and she can be a difference maker. She can, and so far for Oregon State, they've struggled to put a consistent lineup together with defense, pitching, and offense all coming through at the same time. In an elimination game like this, the time has to be now. They dropped the opening round game to USC Upstate 5-2. Had 10 hits in that ball game. They've got to come up with key. Two of them coming off the bat of Ariola, and she looks at ball one to start things off out of West Hills, California. The sophomore shortstop, first team, all Pac-12 selection. And early in the game, you want to make sure you locate the strike zone, figure out what the umpire's calling, Gillespie needing to settle in and start pounding the zone. She is the reigning Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference Pitcher of the Year, the sophomore out of Pelham, Alabama. And she'll come in throwing in the low 60s. She lives and dies by her drop and curve. So it's that changeup that has to stay on to keep headers off balance. And Whitney Gillespie was hurt at the beginning of the year. Struggled to come back quickly. But able to step in and help the Gamecocks go 26-0 in league play. She recovered from shoulder surgery and that throwing shoulder looking mighty good as she strikes out the first batter. And setting up her up nicely by staying outside for most of this at bat. As a slapper, Ariola has to be able to keep her front side in. This ball off the plate and gets the swing for Ariola. So Gillespie, who had seven strikeouts in yesterday's game. And this Jacksonville State team really hung in there with the number four overall seed Auburn Tigers. And it was not until late in the game that they really were able to come through with that game winner. Shelby Weeks called for the offering. It will even up the count. One on one. Weeks, a freshman in the lineup. Swings through that one. All Pac-12 freshman of the year. Several honors coming to the Beavers this season. 30 and 19 and won the record on the year. And Gillespie stays down in the zone for most of her pitches. We saw her against Auburn, that drop ball devastating. And back-to-back -back strikeouts. This one, Weeks is looking. And it's again a drop outside that will come in and nip the plate and freeze up Weeks with no swing of the bat. A strike three called and two outs now for Gillespie. Lovey Lopez went two for three on yesterday with a single and a double. She finally broke through in the month of May. She came into the tournament 0 for 11. And I talked with Scott Woodard, one of the coaches for Auburn yesterday, asked if he would have liked to see the Tigers move up in the box to try to get the ball before the break. And he said, no, our hitters just need to stay off that pitch. Well, Gillespie's drop ball has been falling off the table. This one in play. Bullock handles it and stretching out is Chambers. But Lovey Lopez is at first base. The error on 
And the second baseman. It is not often that you see a left-handed second baseman. Jordan Bullock, a little bobble on the play, will allow the speed of Lovey Lopez down the line. And you being a former second baseman at the University of Arizona, and when we were talking with Coach McGinnis, she's, we had to really rack our brains. She said, no, I can only think of maybe one other left-handed second baseman. And I can think of none, so props <laughs> to her for being able to come up. You rarely see a left-hander play the infield other than first base, so Jordan Bullock showing that she can be effective, switching her feet and playing defense smoothly, but right now a little hiccup in the first inning. Natalie Hampton down the count, 0-2, she strikes out, so Gillespie rolling here. Actually, we're staying here because All runners are safe, says one umpire. Another one is calling the Beavers out. So a quick conference between the fellas in blue. And the inning is done. And so, so with the throw to first base, a tag of first, it will go ahead and go down as a strikeout. And a drop third strike even though there's a runner on one. So Gillespie took care of business, struck out three of the first four batters she faced. The Gamecock overwatching the field here at Jane B. Moore Field in Auburn, Alabama, and an interesting way to in the top half of this inning, along with Jenny Dalton Hill, I'm Tiffany Green, and what well, we saw the drop third strike and then uh, some confusion to close out the inning. Right, with two outs and a runner on first base, even though the base is occupied on a drop third strike, you still have to make that throw and get the out. A little bit of confusion as to what needed to happen. So they tagged second, they tagged first, they tagged the runner, they got at least one, one out out of it. But you could tell that there was confusion by not only the players, but also the umpires. A drop third strike, it hit the ground. So a tag of the runner has to be made because the swing came through, but the ball touched the dirt. So the throw, everyone assumes that they are out, but she gets to first base before the tag of the bag is made. The umpire calls her safe, but then the tag is applied to the secondary runner. So no matter who you call out, it's still the third out of the inning. So they just had to get a little sorting out. Dave Irwin, Cody Little, and Scott Thomas, your blue crew here this afternoon. So for Jacksonville State, and Jana McGinnis, 23rd season with the program, and She's seen this group overachieve, overachieve automatic qualifiers out of the Ohio Valley Conference and Ella Dennis, the senior right fielder, leading things off. And Ella Dennis steps in as the leader of this Jacksonville State squad. Thompson batting average this season and around to helping her earn the OVC Player of the Year. Bev Miller pounding the zone. Comes from a rich pitching history. Her sister was a pitcher as well. Actually against yesterday's opponent, Upstate. And this one Dribbles foul for Miller out of Portland, Oregon. And the six foot righty in the circle. It's 13 and 10 on the season. She faced two batters on yesterday against Upstate. And you'll typically see Bev Miller keep the ball down in the zone. She throws in the low 60s. She'll go from side to side with that drop ball. 
But that changeup is what keeps hitters honest. So she'll throw a drop in the zone that Coach Berg refers to. And just off of Miller's glove, it trickles in to the outfield and a base hit to lead it off for Ella Dennis. And as this ball is a little bit elevated, that drop ball too high in the zone comes through belt high. Dennis able to go ahead and keep her barrel inside this ball and the deflection off of Miller's glove allows the ball to get to the outfield past Areola at short. First team all OVC and Jordan Bullock steps up. She scored the lone run in yesterday's game. Jacksonville State, one of five teams from the state of Alabama in the NCAA tourney. Alabama State and Sanford making their first appearance. And the feel of this game is just a little bit different than game one. Game one today was a winner bracket game. Game two, this game before us is an elimination game. So the loser will go home. And this one lined into right field. And runners at first and second. Base hit for Jordan Bullock. And she gets her barrel out in front of this cur curve screw ball on the outside part of the plate. It just gets in. But it doesn't have to be far. The miscue in right field by Shelby Weeks, though, not picked up by the base runner of Dennis. So she will stay at second, and runners will be at first and second for Taylor Sloan. And Sloan was out for part of the year with a fractured foot. She was cleared two weeks before the conference tournament and has come back and really settled in nicely. And Sloan went around on that one. Down 0-2. And on this pitch, too much force created in her backswing, and she'll break the plane of the plate and get called, and will be sitting at 0-2. Fouls that one away. So the first two base runners on for the Gamecocks. They had just three hits on yesterday. They've got two already. And this one over to Miller. She records the one three put out. I love a pitcher who is able to field her position. There, a high hop sometimes can be a little bit Hard to handle coming out of your windup, but able to keep her wits about her and get the out for the first out of the inning. But now you have runners in scoring position at second and third for a big hitter, McGuire, who steps in, a free swinger. She had a double on yesterday again, just three hits against the Auburn Tigers. But the Beavers facing a red hot team out of the OVC. One of the reasons why they're so hot, they were perfect 26 and 0 in conference play. It's the second time that that's happened in the league. And that location on that pitch needs to be communicated back to the dugout. That pitch is a little bit off the plate. If McGuire wants Jacksonville State to be successful, she has to communicate that back so that the other hitters understand that that pitch will be called on the outside part of the plate. And that went right into the glove of Christy Langlois. Two outs. 
And it looks as though she barrels this ball up, but it doesn't come off the bat as hard as we were expecting. A great defensive play by Christy Langlois at third, but runners able to go ahead and get back. And Jana McGinnis in her 23rd season, a JSU graduate. She was prolific on the basketball court, the hardwood. She was an all golf South Conference guard in basketball, still holds the record as the career assist leader. Her and her twin sister, Dana, took to the hardwood for the Gamecocks. And Stephanie Lewis steps in. She can hit for power, but she's one of the Gamecocks most consistent hitters. And right now with runners in scoring position, a hit right now would be very timely. Thought about it. And did. And strike. <laughs> Unfortunately, allowing that barrel to get too much out ahead of her, it'll go down as a strike. And Bev Miller has the advantage. So the junior Lewis at one and two evens it up there. Strike three. So Bev Miller catches Stephanie Lewis napping and that ends the inning. Two runners left on base for the Gamecocks. Can't convert. We'll see you when you come back. I think the best part about making the NCAA tournament is just having the validation of like why we worked so hard all season long. It's a lifelong dream for all of us girls. It's something we've always dreamed of since we were eight years old. You know, to spend three more weeks with my teammates because I'm a senior, so it's good to be able to just extend it out a little bit. I'd have to say that it's every athlete's dream to be here, and it's an honor to be a part of the small percentage of women that get here. We started with the field of 64 in the NCAA tournament, but this is a big day for many because it could be the last game of the season for several teams around the country and Oregon State and Jacksonville State looking to extend their postseason with a win here this afternoon. And Jenny, you've been in these situations before where you're trying to make it to the Women's College World Series. You're just trying to get out of your regional as well. What are the emotions like going into a game like this? You know, this may be one of the toughest days during a season with 16 regionals going on, 16 teams are playing their last games today. Madison Anthony standing in. And the junior hitting 262 on the season. And I don't want to glance over that emotion that you just brought up, Tiffany. It's really, it's hard because the second game of the day is the loser bracket game. And the 5-3 put out, and Sloan retires Anthony. But that emotion of game two on day two the reason it's so emotional is because these teams play with their back against the wall. It's a win or go home situation for both of these teams. So to be able to come in and play loose is sometimes eluded because you know, unless you put up some runs on the board, this will be the last time you'll be with your team. And for these seniors, forever. Swinging through that one is Christy Langlois. Richard Jr. out of Oak Park, California. Very aggressive swinger when she stands at the dish. Back to Gillespie. And we took a couple of steps and two down. And Gillespie doing a great job of inducing ground balls and strikeouts. 
That's what we saw her do against Auburn yesterday as well. It's the drop ball that is absolutely tough to catch up to. These teams need to make an adjustment against her in order to be productive. And right now, they've got to swing through the drop ball rather than topping it continually. Alicia Everett takes a look at ball one. Despite going 0 for 4 yesterday, she's a, a player in this lineup that's really been heating up for the Beavers. Stands in the seven hole. And Everett has been clutch for Oregon State right now with nobody on. Just looking to be a base runner rather than push anybody around. Waited on that one. Good piece of hitting into right. So a two out base hit from Everett. That brings up Kayleen Schaefer. And Everett does a good job of staying inside this ball and driving it in the 3-4 hole out to right field. But a miscue by Ella Dennis overthrows first base but is not picked up in time by Everett and she'll have to stay at first base. Getting the bat on the ball and able to toss it over is Bullock to Chisholm and that's the third out. So a one runner left on base. The first base hit for the Beavers. It's the Jacksonville State Gamecocks coming up to back six, seven, eight when we come back. strong, intense, passionate. Don't question my heart. Don't doubt my determination. I'm here to win. This is my dream. This is my moment. This is my love. The hope, the goal, all season long, to make it to Oklahoma City and the Women's College World Series starting on June 2nd. You can catch it right here on the ESPN family of networks, but you got a long way to go to make it first as a regional champion, then super regionals before you even think about touching that World Women's College World Series. And that is the dream of every team making it to the postseason right now. That dream a little bit further away for both of these two teams in the loser's bracket of the Auburn Regional. Loser goes home, winner will advance. Whitney Gillespie starting things off. We see her in the circle, but also at the plate as well. Hitting 242, she's the OVC Pitcher of the Year, as we mentioned. And that one bounces over the head of the third baseman. A leadoff single for Gillespie. And off times we talk about the 10th man on the field or woman. And right now it comes into play right in front of home plate. It is hard. And because of it, the bounce will help the ball get over. Langlois is at third and put Gillespie on for the leadoff runner for the Gamecocks. Leela Chambers, a sophomore out of Molina, Georgia. That was critical in helping the Gamecocks win their fifth tournament title in the OVC. She went two for four, including two home runs during that week. Coach McGinnis, in that game yesterday afterwards, she said, you know, we asked our team not to back down, and they certainly did not do that. She felt like they were prepared for every situation, and more importantly, she said, I'm just proud of you. You earned the right to play here, and you played like it. And they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big dog. I mean, to come in and face number four Auburn, ranked nationally, you can really get a hit on your heels. 
And Schaefer watches that one roll foul. And quick beating in the circle with the battery of the Beavers. Leela hitless yesterday, but did draw a walk, showing discipline, but needing to put her bat on the ball. And the second strikeout for Bev Miller in the circle. Bev Miller looking good, having some control and command here early on. The experienced pitcher on this staff also is the team captain. She came over from Monterey Peninsula Junior College. So she also had some postseason experience there on the JUCO level. And Anna Chisholm not known as a hitter. She is a slapper. She will look to touch and go and just find holes through the infield. And because of that, you're needing Whitney Gillespie to be quick on the bases. Bev Miller going to throw up in the zone, but when, talk, when talking to Laura Berg, she said any ball that's up in the zone is still going to have drop spin. So even though you see it up, don't expect rise ball spin. And this one over to second, maybe lost the footing in the infield was Anthony, and the throw gets past the first baseman. And runners at the corners for the Gamecocks. And as a second baseman, that is the cardinal sin. When you have a runner on first base and the ball is in the baseline, you have to make contact with that runner. That will cause her to be automatically out. And that throw does not even need to be made. Right there, the throw is rushed. It gets away and will allow Gillespie to get to third. But if she had just simply made contact with the runner advancing to second base, Gillespie would have been called out and nothing would have happened. But now we'll see a pinch runner coming in for Gillespie. And coming in for Gillespie is Anna Snyder. So the lead off single from Gillespie. And then another one here from Anna Chisholm. First run, 60 feet away with Emily Woodruff swinging. And in a first and third situation like we have with the runners on the corners, the speed of Chisholm could try to advance, draw a throw and get something going on third base with the pinch runner, Anna Snyder. And Woodruff lays down a beautiful bunt but she is called out. I think that one may have hit her. And because contact was made with the ball outside of the box, it was a squeeze play. The bunt is put down. However, as she exited the box, the bat did make con or the ball did make contact with her again. Because of that, the, run, the batter is automatically out. You'll see it comes up and hits off the bat a second time. And so the batter will be out. The base runners will then hold their places. So we'll still see Anna Snyder on third, Anna Chisholm on first, but now two outs are recorded. A well, good thought there, just not able to execute but the top of the order up with Ella Dennis, who singled her first time up. And I love that aggression out of Coach McGinnis, looking for the squeeze, but an untimely bounce. We'll call Chisholm out and leave the runners on the corners. Holds off on that one, it's one and one. Ready, 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 
And in this regional, Jacksonville State has struggled to produce a timely hit with runners in scoring position. Well, Dennis was a part of the last team that made it to the regionals for the Gamecocks. 39 RBI on the season. Chance to add to it here. And lines it out to Areola. That ends the inning. Runners left at the corners and stranded. Not able to do anything. Oregon State with a chance to strike. Nine, one, and two on the way. ESPNW.com for more exclusive content on the NCAA championships, including, well, the top 10 moments thus far in the regionals from Saturday. How about Casey Cooper, ESPNW Player of the Year? She's a stud for the Auburn Tigers. She is, and we're still waiting for that big hit to yeah. come off of her bat. Carasoni has been the one to answer the call for Auburn, but right now, Cooper, the Lady of the Year for ESPNW. And the SEC Player of the Year as well, and a National Player of the Year finalist. Down to the top 10. Just keep racking them up, right? And I love that when we talked to Kara Sony about it in her interview after the last game, she's, I asked, you know, you're not, you're not up for the award this year. You were last year. What's that like? She says, I'm so happy for her. And that's what a good teammate does. You back your teammates up regardless of where you're at. She says the more individual awards for each player, the better it is for the team as well, because that usually means good things have been happening. Exactly, and the numbers for Carasoni and Cooper haven't changed from last year to this year, and Carasoni right now in postseason play has been absolutely clutch for the Tigers. Jessica Garcia, one of the youngsters on this team, went one for three on yesterday, Pac-12 all-freshman team. She's a speedy slapper, very dangerous when she gets on base. Did she go around? Home plate umpire says yes. Two and two. And that's one of the things that I'm seeing is a lack of discipline at the plate. The barrel continues to break the plane and wrists continue to break as they go for each ball. You have to keep that barrel back to stay effective through the zone. Strike three as swing and a miss from Garcia. Three strikeouts, rather four for Garcia. And Gillespie. it's this drop ball for Gillespie that has been the key for both yesterday and today. Hitters unable to make the adjustment to get under this ball. They continue to swing over, and Gillespie will ring up another strikeout for the first out of the inning. She can move it past you. She can keep you off balance. And Ariola, who struck out her first time up, Hoping to get on base. She, like Garcia, brings speed to the base path. They both have 11 stolen bases. And I used to love hitting off a drop ball pitcher. Because the ball was not elevated through the zone, I could look down and then just pick a side of the plate. But I'm seeing a lack of discipline to stay off of the pitches that they don't want to hit. Right now, as a hitter, you have to pick a side of the plate early in the count, knowing that the ball will be down, look in or look out. But you cannot just go up there and free swing and expect to be effective. And two strikeouts in this inning for Gillespie and two away for the Beavers. And Ari Ariel is first at bat. She struck out on a drop out. This at bat, changing sides of the plate. Gillespie gets her on a drop in. And Ariola will swing through and a miss. And Weeks swings through that one. Is it a matter of, you know, do you think really on both sides, are they, are they pressing a little bit too much, trying to push the issue, forcing something, trying to force something? I would say that Jeff Gillespie showing no emotion 
Whitney's dad in the stands, each strikeout having that same emotion, but that's what makes a good pitcher, being stoic in the pitching circle. Just got a tip on that one. But the adjustment has to be made in the dugout, not necessarily in your at bat. You know she's gonna throw down. You know she's gonna throw in and out with that drop ball. Make an adjustment. It's the drop in that is so hard to get to as a slapper because you're decreasing the distance as you run toward the, toward the circle. <laughs> Gillespie thinking maybe she nipped the corner on that one a little two-step running man on the way out of the circle. <laughs> We don't have our dancer on the scaffolding this inning. We've seen a lot of dance moves though. So far here from the park. Struck out the side, Gillespie with yet another strikeout. Six total for the day. Two, three, four on the way. Gillespie says, I'm feeling it from the circle. Here at J.B. Moore Field in Auburn, Alabama, this loser's bracket game between Oregon State and Jacksonville State. And with the postseason life on, at stake right now, we're seeing just kind of uh, a real chill vibe from both dugouts. Right, a laissez-faire attitude. Ladies, your season is on the line, and you've got to be able to pick up the energy on the field, in the dugouts, do something to infuse yourself with a little bit of urgency right now really struggling to bring out the energy of the crowd the energy in the dugout guys backs against the wall let's go come on out right now we're feeling a little bit like the chicken head the game cocks yeah on top of the dugout no props allowed in the dugout in postseason play but right now needing something to infuse some energy into both of these dugouts when i see the game cat mascot, the head looking over, it's like, I always feel like someone's watching me. <laughs> Here we go. So you can't okay. have props, but nobody <laughs> says you can't have cups, right? right? So let's go ahead and make props out of what we're given. Gamecocks waking up. Jordan Bullock starting off her at bat here in the bottom of the third with a 3-0 count. Is this the inning the Gamecocks wake up? And the leadoff walk to Bullock. It must be the power of the cup in the dugout bringing on the Gamecocks. <laughs> you know, someone would see that and say, that is a work of art. That is a piece of art, and I feel like I should have that. You know, it's beauty in the eye of the beholder. Well, I, I was driving back to the hotel after the game yesterday and drove by the Museum of Fine Art here on <laughs> Auburn's campus. Not sure that would go down as fine art, <laughs> but whatever it takes, you've got to stay alive. It was Taylor Sloan who grounded out to the pitcher back in the first. Well, this is a crew that's just been steady and consistent all season long in every phase of the game, hitting, pitching, and defense. This game crew in their seventh regional appearance, their only regional crown. There's a win over Tennessee back in 2009. And they advance to the Super Regional. And in talking to Coach McGinnis yesterday, or two days ago, she talked about how the girls on this team have not been to regionals. The only ones are the seniors, Ella Dennis leading the charge, who wrote a letter to the team explaining what would be expected of them in postseason play. And in that letter, it outlined the fact that, look, you got to expect routine. Our coaches like routine when you're coming into a weekend like this. Order wisely for pregame meals, something that sometimes may be looked over. Prepare for weather. And certainly we have been so thankful to Mother Nature for holding off. And of course, you want to get to the point where you can get on the dog pile and celebrate. And waiting for that one is Hampton and just able to toss it back over to Anthony. 
for the first down of the inning. A great job fielding her position. Coming up with the backhanded toss. She tops this ball, gets over the top of it, and will drive it to the right side. Natalie Hampton able to come off of first base, communicate with Madison Anthony to get over and make the coverage and record the out for the first out of the inning. McGuire line to third in her last at bat. Runner in scoring position for Jacksonville State. Just off of Bev Miller's glove, and Anthony not able to handle it. And I think they're going to rule that one a single for Jamie McGuire. And this hard hit ball back up the middle deflects off the glove of Bev Miller, which makes it hard for Madison Anthony to come up with it cleanly. That's tough as a second baseman. I've been in that position before. It's easier if the pitcher does not even make contact with it, but because of the deflection, an error will go in the books. Well, now with runners at the corners for Stephanie Lewis, and she drives it through the 3-4 hole, and that's the first one to touch the plate. Game Cox on the board. And that ball in the 3-4 hole, should have been a ball that Natalie Hampton, a tall frame with long levers, should have been able to come off the bag and grab. She went T-Rex on us, though, and pulled back a ball that was too far away for Madison Anthony to get to. However, in that situation, she needs to dive and get dirty and prevent the run from coming around. And the Gamecocks will push their first run around. And so they started the regional 0 for 9, but since that time, they're Two for two with runners in scoring position. And Langlois tagging third, getting the lead runner off the shot from Gillespie. And we've seen that play several times. Two in the first game. This is the first one here, but this ground ball to third base should have resulted in a third to first double play. She had her at first, but held up on the throw. Only two outs now. Chambers looks at a strike from Miller. And keeping that one in front of her is Kayleen Schaefer. Good job by the catcher. Coach Berg loves Schaefer behind the plate because she is such a wall. Just in front. And Schaefer is able to get Chambers out. That's the third out of the inning. But one run pushed across for the Gamecocks, and we'll hear from Jacksonville State's head coach, Jana McGinnis, on the other side of the break. And through three innings, and Jacksonville State on top, one and nothing, as the head coach for the Gamecocks, Jana McGinnis, thank you so much for joining us. And coming into a game like this, you're playing for your postseason lives. Whitney Gillespie in the circle, the emotion that she's bringing or really kind of helping to carry with the intensity for this team. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, last night I know the girls were very disappointed, and when we went to eat, I, I, I said, all right, you got 10 minutes to whine, cry, complain, <laughs> whatever, and then it's over. Then we're focusing on Oregon State. And it, you, in 10 minutes, you couldn't get them to shut up. So, you know, they're young girls. They're more resilient than we are, and, uh, you know, I'm just proud of all of them. And I knew Whitney, she's a gamer. I knew she'd be here today. Well, Coach, we saw a little bit of antics in the dugout. What's up with the cups? 
they became creative today. You know, we were told we had to take away our, our headgear that we've had all year, and that's kind of been our rally caps that our girls uh, were creative when we started conference, and we've been on a roll, and every inning is a theme for our dugout. And, you know, one inning is when they pull out the headgear, and, you know, it makes it fun for softball. But we were taking, they were taking those up yesterday, so our girls are using the water cups. So if they run out of cups, they just won't get water, but I guess it'll be <laughs> worth it. <laughs> All right, thanks, and good luck the rest Thank of the way. Thank you for having us. Well, Coach May mentioned about the fact that, you know, they first saw Michaela Martin for Auburn, and then the Tigers switched over to Walters, who really kind of shut them down. She felt like they needed to be more aggressive. She wanted her hitters to be more aggressive. Instead, they were just taking and watching today a little different story. And starting off the inning is Lovey Lopez. She's aboard safely once again for the second consecutive at bat. Well, in a change of the tide, finally a leadoff base runner for Oregon State. A drop outside, Lovey Lopez able to stay through this ball, get all of it, and drive it in the 5-6 hole just past the glove of Anna Chisholm. It'll get to the outfield, and Oregon State will lead off the inning with a runner. This is an Oregon State team who had really one of its best seasons in a very long time. Highest winning percentage at 622 since 2007 under the direction of Laura Berg. And Natalie Hampton, one of the veterans of this crew. That helped the Beavers get back to their 11th NCAA regional appearance. And I like that hard swing out of Hampton. The issue I'm having with it is her load is not taking her back and leading her through the zone. Her front shoulder is pulling her off, and so she's pulling off these pitches. She has to stay through and get back up the middle. And now 14 strikeouts and 10 innings pitch for Whitney Gillespie. She is having herself a regional tournament. And it's that right side that continues to fly wide that does not allow her to stay through the zone. This drop in is deadly when her weight is out on her front foot. Gillespie pounding the zone and doing such a great job keeping Oregon State at bay. As she continues to throw that drop ball in and out, Oregon State needs to make adjustments to be successful. gotten just two hits off of Gillespie here today. And a good idea for Anthony, seeing that her corners were pulled back if she had been able to drop that ball down a line. Her speed would have carried her down. But now with two strikes, the bun is off the table. She'll be swinging away. If you're Anthony, you want to take advantage of the fact that this is the first leadoff batter to reach first base. And now works the count to three and two. And Jamie McGuire doing such a great job picking the balls out of the dirt, knowing that she's a drop ball pitcher. She's got to make sure she stays aggressive behind it. Right back to Gillespie, nice glove in the circle and the high throw from Chisholm. It bounces off the net. And two away. And Gillespie fielding a position so well, comes up with this ball, quickly throws through to Chisholm, but Chisholm short arms it, gets nicked by the, th by the runner and throws this ball wide right. In her favor, though, that pole, keeping the ball in play and preventing the runner from being granted second base. So Langlois grounded back to Gillespie in their the first at bat. And for this Oregon State team, you know, they had to travel a really long way, second longest distance. In the NCAA tournament only ahead of them, the Fordham Rams. 
more than 2,100 miles from Corvallis, Oregon. And this one on the ground, the lefty second baseman ends the inning. We'll talk more with the Oregon State head coach, Laura Berg, in her fourth season with the program when we come back. My favorite World Series moment is 1998. We're playing against Arizona. Uh, Amanda Scott's on the mound. She's throwing the game of her life. Um, the inning before, Nina Lindenberg had hit a ball out, so we're up one nothing, and we have to hold Arizona to three outs. Ground ball, this will do it. The Bulldogs are national champions. We're the underdogs, we're not expected to be there, and we come out and we win one zip. won uh, Fresno State's national championship back in 1998. And Coach Berg, you've had the experience of going to the Women's College World Series. How badly do you think your Oregon State <laughs> Beavers team wants it? And for you to have them experience what you experience? You know, I want these guys to experience it so badly I can taste it. Um, these guys, I don't know, they're not playing with a whole lot of grit and a whole lot of passion right now. And so I'm going to have to light a firecracker under their butt. And I would ask, how are you going to do that? It seems like it's in the box that they're just not able to make the adjustment. They're not. They're not being tough outs at all. They're not swinging at good pitches. They're letting the, the mistakes go by, and we've got to capitalize on the mistakes. And, hey, you might want to turn around and pick up your players. Absolutely. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get them later. If you mess with the bull, you get the horn. We just created another diamond moment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good luck, Coach. Thank you. Go beef. Well, Coach Berg told us that she carries – a rock in her pocket around with her uh, just because she feels like she has to be the rock of this team. Only two seniors on the roster for the Beavers and so she's had the experience. She's been there before and she's melting a young group of women together. And the 4-3 put out of Chisholm to start the inning. And you know, the reason that it's so hard to lead from the front as a coach is because that emphasis has to come from within. And when you don't have players who have achieved that level, it's so hard to be able to help them understand what it takes to get there. That grit, that determination, the fire that she says she needs to light under their rear ends. That's what Laura Berg had when she was a player. She was one of those people that you hated to see come up in the box as a Sitting at second base, I remember her as a slapper thinking, how the heck are we going to get her out this time? Because she was so dominant and she pushed her team from within. Right now, Oregon State never experiencing that, not knowing how to push that forward from within. And heavily decorated is she, a four-time Olympian with the U.S. national team, three gold medals and a silver as well. I like to think of her as the triples queen. Her speed was so deadly. Dang, she was tough to get out. <laughs> would you challenge her to a race right now? Heavens no, I wouldn't challenge her to a race back in the day. <laughs> now hitting, yeah, put yeah. us toe to toe in the box. Yeah, I'd hit it out a whole lot more than she could. But that's why she's so deadly, because she could hit for power, drop a drag, or slap to a hole. She was impossible to get out. Would you swing and a miss? 2-2 two, two count. And with two strikes, you like to see hitters that are able to get their barrel to the zone quickly, but right now it seems like both sides of this field, both Jacksonville State and Oregon State really struggling to load and stay long through the zone. They're getting to the zone quickly, but pulling out of the zone as quickly as well. And right, they've got to be able to extend the strike zone and take it right back up the middle to be more effective. Keeping that one from going any further in the dirt is Schaefer. A 
and Miller with another strikeout. Her third of the day. Well, the Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, June 2nd at noon Eastern live on ESPN. For more information on the 2016 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And for Bev Miller, she's got her support of her sister in the stands. Anna Miller, who plays with the PA Rebellion, graduated from USC Upstate also in this regional back in 2014. Part of one of the four regional teams that have made it in the last four years under Chris Hawkins. And yesterday, she was conflicted. Today, Not no so doubt. much. No. <laughs> Well, it's all it, Oregon gear. It was fun to talk Oregon to Bev State. talking about how they used to go to pitching lessons together as well. And when you go to pitching lessons and you drive there, you drive home, that competition of I'm going to be better than you, and especially as the younger sister, always trying to outperform the older sister, Anna. Bev now steps into the circle and has Anna behind her the whole way. Right over to Natalie Hampton. So three up, three down. Good inning for Bev Miller. So now some energy needing to be injected into this Oregon State team. How about some fun <laughs> for Coach Bird? Take a look at the NCAA softball regional bracket presented by Capital One. Auburn advances to the regional final. They will play the winner of this game as the Tigers took down USC Upstate in our first game of the day by a score of six to one. On the road to the Women's College World Series, the Tigers made it there for the first time in school history on last year, trying to make consecutive trips. And Alicia Everett up to the plate now. A single in her last at bat, driving it to right field. Just one of two hits given up by Gillespie today. And when leading off the inning, Everett has been mightily effective for the Beavers. Over to second. One down. Not as effective in that leadoff slot. Struggling to punch it through the infield. The drop ball of Gillespie too much to overcome for the Beavers at this point. Struggling to get base runners and then be able to push anything around and make anything happen. for the Beavers. They haven't really done a lot in getting it out of the infield that stays in a 6-4 put out. And the throw of Anna Chisholm seeming to not have too much behind it today, but a great defensive play by getting herself in position. Short arms it though, a great pick by Leela Chambers to come up for the out. And now two outs in the inning, but to be able to have that range, she's got to be able to come up with a throw that comes through Chambers instead of just to her. And a first pitch strike from Gillespie. This is an Oregon State team that had some big top 25 RPI wins against opponents like Oklahoma, Washington, UCLA, Kentucky, and Arizona during the regular season and preseason. And a lot of that is due to the fact of the arm in the circle. Whitney Gillespie doing well against Oregon State, but Oregon State coming up with big wins throughout the season. Gillespie right now, 14 outs. Half of them has come as strikeouts and the other half as ground outs. Oregon State needing to get underneath a drop ball to be able to drive it to the grass. 
Instead, she's kept them off balance, just like that swing from Jessica Garcia all game long. Eight strikeouts for Whitney Gillespie. She's just got it rolling, rolling off the fingertips. Gillespie sits him down. Well, USC Upstate head coach Chris Hawkins and his right fielder Ryan Rector readying for the winner of this ball game. They will face them in the next one and trying to advance to the regional final. Whoever wins the last game of the evening will take on Auburn tomorrow in this double elimination tournament. Along with Jimmy Dalton Hill, three-time national champion from the University of Arizona. I'm Tiffany Green. Ohio, Oregon State, excuse me. The visitors in this one, Jacksonville State, able to jump on the board in the third inning. And that's the only run of the game. Well, and Tiffany, we saw that the run production for Jacksonville State happened after a little bit of emotion came out of the dugout for them. And right now, both of these teams seeming a little bit flat knowing that this is a winner go home game. And you said earlier the fact that that's got to come from within. At this point of the season, knowing what's at stake and you've kind of prepared for this moment, the fact that no one needs to get you up for this, you got to do it yourself. Well, and just the urgency, that's what I see the lack. There's no push in the dugouts or on the field. It just seems like an absolute lack of emotion. If you want to play the next game, you have to win right now, and it can't come later. You're in the bottom of the fifth inning. And as Bev Miller, as one of the three seniors on the team for Oregon State, she certainly is the team captain so she can provide leadership from the circle, but it's also a matter of getting the bats going and at least being able to tie up this ball game. Well, it's been the drop ball of Whitney Gillespie that has absolutely changed the face of the Oregon State offense. They have to make an adjustment. Move up in the box, swing under the ball, whatever it is, you know it's going to be a drop ball. Jacksonville State cannot just sit on one run. High chopper. Good play from Areola. And it's a base hit to lead off the inning from Jordan Bullet. A great job coming across the infield by Areola. A high chop oh, directly over Bev Miller's head. She comes up with it, sets her feet, makes the throw. It looked like she was out in real time. <laughs> Natalie Hampton doesn't believe it either. However, her step on that stretch needs to come right at the ball. It will put the ball in her glove sooner. With those levers, she can reach. But because they do not come up with it, a base runner for Jacksonville State with no outs. 7 hits now for the game cox and this one in and tied it hits taylor sloan two runners aboard for jamie mcguire who stands in singled her last time up off of miller this ball just gets away from bev miller on her pull across for the drop ball It'll go into the batter's box, and Taylor Sloan has some new fashion. She'll go ahead and wear it all the way down to first base. Thirty-five runs batted in for McGuire. The Gamecocks average about five runs a game this season. And Jamie McGuire was run for by Haley Sims her last time out but because of the re-entry rule Jamie McGuire able to come back in and do damage again at the plate well 
Well, neither team has really done a good job of moving runners to home. Two for nine for Jacksonville State. Oregon State even hasn't even had that opportunity here today. And this one hard, lead, well, hard hit to shortstop. And the double play pulled off. Six, four, three for the Beavers. I thought perhaps that Ariola would take it herself, but a clean transition between Ariola to Anthony and a hard throw across over to Hampton will get out Jamie McGuire. So two outs now in the inning. Nice play there from the shortstop. Ball outside, 2-1 to Stephanie Lewis. Bev Miller very stoic in the circle, not showing a whole lot of emotion, but then again, neither are many of the Oregon State Beavers right now needing to infuse some energy, come up with an out and save the run from scoring. Lewis had the RBI single back in the third to put up the one run on the scoreboard in favor of the Gamecocks. Right now, Stephanie Lewis stepping in, needing to be productive with a runner in scoring position. Jacksonville State having nine of these opportunities, needing to go ahead and get a base hit here. And right over to Hampton, all for glove, a run comes across. It's two nothing, Jacksonville State off the air by Hampton. And a tough play to come up with on a sharply hit ball off the bat of Stephanie Lewis doing her job. Hampton struggles to come up with it. A sharply hit, keeps her hands inside this, drives it down the line. But Hampton forgetting to move her feet to get in front of that ball. It will go ahead and push another run across for Jacksonville State. Well, a little extra cushion for Whitney Gillespie. Who's doing a fantastic job in the circle for her team. I always love it. Pitcher that can hit for herself. She is the one with the most information other than the catcher about where the strike zone resides. So Gillespie knowing what's getting called, she should be very effective knowing the strike zone in this at bat. How much longer Bev Miller will stay in the circle. She's thrown 88 pitches just now in the fifth inning, but location or command seems to not be a spot on. And ranging over 
to the left side, and that's the third out. Anthony to Hampton. One runner left on base, one hit given up. One run came across along with one error. And Jacksonville State clinching to a 2 0 lead. Regional bracket presented by Capital One. The winner of this one would advance to play in our next game. And then, of course, everyone is waiting to take on the Auburn Tigers. They are done for the afternoon with their win over USC Upstate. They will be in action tomorrow here at J.B. Moore Field, the number four national seed and several SEC teams winning in their opening round games and advancing on to the regional final, including Florida, Michigan, Oklahoma, Alabama, some of the top seeds in the tournament. And I'm going to get this in here, but your alma mater in the Arizona Wildcats pushing through, able to advance, taking down Tennessee. Of course, the winner of this regional will face the winner in the Knoxville Regional. Nice play from Madison Anthony from the second base position. One away. And that's the defense that it will take to go ahead and advance. But right now, Oregon State struggling with the bats to get anything going on. Whitney Gillespie, Bev Miller inducing a ground ball there. Madison Anthony coming up with the easy play for three for the first out of the inning. I feel like that was an excellent call. Thank you. From you, Jenna. Anytime you want to take over here. Come on. Sitting right here. I got you. <laughs> Bev Miller in the circle. A little bit more control this inning. We saw her a little wild last time. Anna Chisholm will step in. She's got two home runs on the year, but Tiffany is going to take more than a home run here to help. Now, granted, Jacksonville State is up. Chisholm is. The shortstop for Jacksonville State coming up with some key plays today, but right now needing to go ahead and get a base runner and push this envelope a little bit further. Well, Beth Miller has held her own in the circle, gave up, you know, seven hits so far in this one. Two runs have come across, but she needs to be backed up by the bats and her offense. They're used to producing five runs a game, and so far they've been shut out by Whitney Gillespie. And they'll call it as an out. Chisholm thinks it's off her foot, but the umpire crew does not believe so. Coach McGinnis down the line, going to go ahead and come have a visit. But off the bat, Chisholm says it hits her in the foot. It does nick her foot, but unless the umpire crew saw it or deems that that's what happened, the lack of advancement down the line Hampton's throw to first base with Anthony covering will just yield a, an out. So that's how it will go down in the books. And Emily Church in as the pinch hitter for the nine hole hitter, Emily Woodruff. Church, first team all conference selection in the OVC, also an All American from the junior college ranks. And yesterday, Church came in in a pinch hit situation as well. That at bat was a strikeout, so now coming in to try to redeem herself in this situation off Bev Miller. And interestingly enough, she leads the team in RBI with 41, so very productive first season with Jacksonville State, but she's coming in in a pinch hitting role in each of the last two games. Well, and here, without a runner on, an RBI would only be recorded off a home run. She does have 10 on the season. 
but a base hit is really her job in this at bat. Hit ball down the left field line. It goes foul. But it woke up the crowd. That's the thing that has been out of this game. It's been so dynamically different from game one to game two. Game one, the whole place is full of Auburn Tiger fans cheering and keeping the energy alive. So far in this elimination game, it's been a lack of energy that's been the names, been the thing that has come out of this game. And Jacksonville stages two hours due north of here and just kind of peering eyes from the dugout for Oregon State. A little bit more chatter from the Gamecocks dugout. And whether that's because Oregon State is in the sun and Jacksonville State is in the shade, maybe that does go into it. But right now, Oregon State looking to go home with just three more outs to play with offensively. And Bev Miller, one of the three seniors on this team for Oregon State. Bioengineering major, had a good conversation with her a couple of days ago. And she's looking to, uh, to save the world, do all kinds of fancy stuff that I don't even know if I'm qualified to talk about. Fourth full count of the day. And Church draws the two out walk. So turning over the lineup for Ella Dennis. And in as a pinch runner for Church. Or back in is Emily Woodruff. Excuse me. And so just a re-entry of Woodruff to take first base. A little bit more speed than Church on the bases. Woodruff will go ahead and assume her position at first base. And Ella Dennis will look to go ahead and give some senior leadership and show the rest of the squad how it's done. And this one just pass. Langlois, so a hard hit single from Dennis to keep the inning alive with two outs. And because of the proximity of Jacksonville State to Auburn, a little bit more crowd support here than Oregon State. And this ball, as she hits the outside pitch, takes it right down the line, past the glove of Langlois. It will go ahead and cross over the base, calling a fair ball but because it's down the left field line, Woodruff will be unable to advance to third. Fouled off a Bullock. The last time Bullock was up, she had a single up the middle. This ball down the line, so close, but it doesn't have to land in fair territory. It just has to cross third base over. And because it comes over the bag, it is a fair ball. I know a lot of people would argue, but it landed in foul territory. But it didn't get in foul territory until it passed third base. A great call. Jacksonville State, two for 11 with runners in scoring position today. You see the numbers for Bullock, 16 RBI when she's been in this situation throughout the season. That 
one in the dirt. Ball three. And Bev Miller not really showing any kind of urgency. Keeping herself very even keel in the circle, but right now needing a little bit of emotion to go ahead and ring up out number three and get her team in the dugout. Didn't get the call there. Bases loaded for Taylor Sloan. Sloan still searching for her first hit of the day. Two ground outs and was hit by a pitch in her last at bat. It's a better attack in a first pitch out of Bev Miller. She's got to pound the zone and really get that drop ball in. And get it under the bat of Sloan. When I was asking Coach Berg about what kind of pitches she would be throwing in the circle, she said, you know, Bev Miller, she throws a drop ball and a drop ball and a drop ball. <laughs> so anytime you see it elevated in the zone, that's going to be a drop ball. So she said, it's kind of a rop, a rise with drop spin. So anything that Bev Miller throws is going to be inducing a ground ball unless it's elevated. That means Kayleen Schaefer has to be mighty busy behind the plate. Good look there at her pitching coach, Mercy Green. Associate head coach in her third year with the program. Pitched at Fresno State. Anna Miller, her sister, looking on, trying to give her that extra support to go ahead and push her ahead. Two down. She's ahead in the count. Bev Miller. Only the pitching plate, ready to go ahead and fire. On the ground, and the easy out for the Beavers. So the final three outs coming up. Four, five, six, do up for the Beavers. Oregon State traveled more than 2,000 miles to Auburn, Alabama, and their season is on the line. If they don't at least produce two runs here, they've struggled against Whitney Gillespie. Eight strikeouts, three runners left on base this afternoon. And Tiffany, they've had opportunities with runners on first base five different times right now have not even been able to advance a runner to second base. Not, no opportunities with runners in scoring position struggling to string hits together. Well, Laura Berg said yesterday after the loss that they didn't come up with the key hits like they needed. They left a small village on base. And she said, we're not going to win if you do that. And Natalie Hampton stepping in, a junior, having one more season to play. But so far in this game, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, and she's really struggled to put anything together. She is a power hitter. Nine home runs on the season. And the team leader in RBI. A change of speed pitch out of the hand of Gillespie, changing things up here in the seventh inning. Yesterday it was the seventh inning there where she struggled against Auburn. Swung through that one. Two strikes and two balls on Hampton. trying to fight that one off. And that's a foul ball. And that has been a play that has come about more than <laughs> once in this game. Umpire is now alert to it. We're watching it a little bit closer. First base umpire 
Cody Little sees it come off of her foot. Gillespie done a good job with control. Yesterday had five walks against Auburn. Today, no free passes here to go along with eight strikeouts. And the hot one, that's just the third hit given up. That's a single down the first baseline for Natalie Hampton to lead it off here in the seventh for Oregon State. And still a lack of emotion in the dugout. This is a win or go home game. Ladies, you have to bring emotion to the game in order to be successful. And right now, Hampton, that should have fired up the dugout. A hard shot down the line, freezing Leela Chambers down into the corner, cut off well by Ella Dennis to get back in and prevent an extra base. Riley Gregoire, Gregoire, excuse me, at first base. And everyone just kind of stood still as that ball went down on the right side. And this is the sixth opportunity with a runner on first base for Oregon State. They have been unsuccessful to this point to push a runner into scoring position. No outs, lead runner on, find a way to get her over. Almost in the exact spot of that last pitch, trying to frame it on the outside corner. Gillespie didn't get the call there. Two and one the count. That one violently came back to Madison. Well, and perhaps the telling moment is that base hit down the line didn't yield a, any kind of emotion off either side. You've got to be on your toes expecting the ball every time it comes off the bat, no matter what position you play. And taking off is Gregoire, and she's in safely. So now a runner in scoring position for the Beavers. And able to stop that when it's a foul ball. And that's the kind of effort you need. Fair or foul, do not allow this ball to come down. But as this ball goes down the line, it appears that it could have been a fair ball. It stays in fair territory, but no, it's over the line. Once contact is made, foul ball. Good call by the home plate umpire. Going down the same way as Anthony. Still three and two. Now, because she has fouled off two pitches inside, a change of speed or a hard drop out would be what I would be looking for as a hitter. You cannot just expect this ball hard in. Stay through the zone with your barrel if you want to be successful. Well, Anthony had a 3-2 count against Oklahoma for the walk off. And she's on board with the first walk of the day for Whitney Gillespie. And we saw things turn around in the circle as Gillespie kind of melt melted down two hit batters and then this rbi sack fly from carly wallace tiffany howard went on to score the game winning run so jana mcginnis takes a quick trip to the circle rallies her infield reminding them hey ladies we've got no outs but a two-run lead let's hold tight to that if we want to keep our season alive well, and with Hampton on second, well, it's Gregoire on second and Anthony on first. Those represent the tying runs. And as Langloy steps in, it gives her the go ahead. If she's able to light one up, this game could change hands. Instead, she sacrifices. And. The runners advance to second and third. 
And because there was no outs, that could be an option. A simple sacrifice, square early, see the ball down, then leave the box. Her job is to be out, and she does it successfully. Everett off the glove of Chambers, and two runs come across. Game tied. And because of the sack bun, it puts runners in the exact right spot off the bat of Everett down the line, able to come up with the two RBI single. And Oregon State has now tied it up in the top of the seventh inning. We saw this happen to Gillespie on yesterday. And Chambers, I don't know if she could have really done anything with that one, but that was a tough one to try to keep in the infield. Michelle Sass, the pinch runner at first base. And I'm going to have to argue with that on, argue with that, Tiffany, because your job as an infielder is to block everything up and be a wall. Expect it. And we've seen her get surprised twice now this inning. Kayleen Schaefer. A nice fielding from Gillespie and took the sure out at first base. Sass moves to second, but two down. A heads up play by Gillespie, recognizing that her middle infielders were not in position to make that play. Sass with the wheels will go ahead and get into second base. Great defensive play by Gillespie in the circle to get the out. And even though we've seen a lead diminish, Oregon State still so quiet in the dugout. The crowd completely uninvolved. Heidi Hall. Pinch hitter. Sophomore for the Beavers, 250 average on the year. No RBI, but a great opportunity for her first here to try to put the Beavers ahead. And it was yesterday against Auburn that we saw the seventh inning implosion. Gillespie strong the entire game in the circle. The seventh inning, the hiccup. And a seventh inning hiccup again today. And the final out of the inning. But this ball game is tied up. Taking advantage of an opportunity and trying to seize the moment. Can Jacksonville State answer in the bottom half? at Oregon State or Jacksonville State as we move to the bottom of the seventh. Tied at two apiece. Bev Miller got some support to extend this ball game. Two runs coming in the top half to even it up at two apiece along with Jenny Dalton Hill, Tiffany Green, and trying to push her through as her sister Anna Miller watching on. She's been in this position before with USC Upstate also in this tournament. The winner of this game will go on to play Anna Miller's alma mater and the Spartans. Jamie McGuire with a 2-0 count. And the difference between the dugouts at the moment is the fact that the Gamecocks are all on the fence, all cheering, and we have not seen that out of Oregon State as of yet. So right now, trying to propel another run. 
and finish this game. And that one is foul. Well, we saw both of the opening round games on yesterday decided in the seventh inning. It was the Gamecocks who fell just short of pulling off the upset, a heartbreaking loss to the Auburn Tigers, the host for this regional, two to one off of a couple of hit by pitches from Whitney Gillespie for Oregon State. They saw USC Upstate rally and break through with four runs in the seventh frame. Well, we may be the regional that you cannot turn away from because we don't let things happen till the seventh inning. <laughs> Good sell. And that's called a strike. And not a good enough sell out of McGuire thinking she grabbed the walk. Pushes it to a full count. This pitch comes across the outside part of the plate. A good placement and great framing. Kayleen Schaefer behind the plate pulls it to a full count. Holds off of that one. So now she can take first base. So Tiffany, does the conversation become how many times does a leadoff walk oh, yeah. turn into a run? Right now, advantage, Gamecocks. We've seen it so many times all season long and in this regional as well. And Stephanie Lewis laying down the perfect sacrifice and beats it out for the infield single. And all of a sudden, the Gamecocks have come alive. The crowd is on their feet. The girls are out of the dugout. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some emotion. And a beautiful drag bunt laid down. The hop plays to her advantage. Bev Miller comes to field it. But the speed of Lewis, too much to go down the line. She will beat it out. A great job by Lewis. And now everybody's going to come together. And, and we'll see a pitching change in the circle. Mira Nelson, who started yesterday's game, the freshman, will take over for Bev Miller. Both of these teams not wanting to go home. Jacksonville State threatening to advance to the next game. Or will the Beavers hold them at bay? We'll come back and find out. Stay with us. Laura Burr calling on her freshman, Mira Nelson. Pac-12 all-freshman team. We saw her on yesterday. She will get the opportunity to try to hold off the Gamecocks. And she's the hardest thrower on staff. She wants the ball. All of her pitches, though, trail up in the zone. Her changeup is kind of a non-pitch. It's still a work in progress. So right now, elevating the ball could mean trouble for Oregon State. But as long as she's able to stay purposeful and purposeful in her pitches, she'll be able to take down the Gamecocks and keep this game tied. The runner at second represents the winning run, Whitney Gillespie, and that one gets past Schaefer, so the Gamecocks 60 feet closer to ending this ball game. 
and a pinch runner will now take third base. Casey Ackenberger on third will come in to run. And how appropriate is that for Coach McGinnis Ackenberger, one of the two seniors on this team? for the Gamecocks. And now, the pitcher, Whitney Gillespie, will step in and try to win this game for herself. No outs. <laughs> Big moment here. Swing and a miss. Fanned on that one. And that's the ball up in the zone that we'll need to see Mira Nelson keep up and away from the bat of the Gamecocks. And it plays to Mira Nelson's favor. Because that ball was tight on the zone, it Gillespie had turned to bunt, but because it was close, she had to try to she tried to get out of the way, and the bat came through the zone. It'll be recorded as a strike. Fouls that one off. Still 2-2. Two -two. This is the final game for one of these two teams. And Nelson comes in and mows down Gillespie, one away. Maria Chambers who let a couple get by to even this score at two in the top half of the inning off the Beavers' bats. This one ever so big, not leaning down to try to block it and keep it in the infield. Here she is with a chance to redeem herself and close out the Beavers. Good pitch there from Nelson. And Chambers caught fire in the OVC tournament, hitting 462. Two home runs in that tournament. A home run here would be a walk-off win. Six of 21 with runners in scoring position. Just two for 13 today. <laughs> Waiting to see what Nelson throws her way, staying patient. Three and one the count. This one up, and that's not what you want if you're the Gamecocks. Two down. And you do want something elevated and lifted, however, not to the infield. Had she been able to get a little bit more of that and driven it to the outfield, that could have been a sack fly to win it. And now it's on Anna Chisholm. The freshman with nine RBI on the season. She singled today in the first inning, or rather second inning off of Bev Miller. Swings through that one, 60 miles per hour from Nelson. But it's that front stride foot she's got to make sure she stays in line with. If she pulls out her front side, she will miss again. An anxious moment for both dugouts. Uses that one by Chisholm. 
two and two. And that one right there caught Chisholm looking. So a wasted opportunity, a golden moment for the game. Cox to end it with the first two batters on base. We go to extra innings before this one can be decided. Come back with us. Back here in Auburn, Alabama, top of the eighth inning and Jacksonville State sees their season hanging in the balance as Oregon State was able to tie it up. Mira Nelson was able to retire the three batters that she faced coming in relief for Bev Miller. So she did her part after the Beavers tied it up, two strikeouts for the freshman. So a couple of defensive changes for the Gamecocks. We see Taylor Sloan move from third base to behind the plate. And in her stead at third base is Caitlin Sapp. So trying to bunt her way on base is McKenna Areola to lead off the inning. But to be successful with a drag bunt, you have to get your barrel out in front right now, leaving that barrel a little too deep, fouling two pitches off, and now sits 0-2 in the count. <laughs> a very good sell behind the plate by Taylor Sloan entering this inning as the catcher, playing the entire game previously at third base. Swung through that one. One down. Ninth strikeout for Whitney Gillespie. And yet again, another drop ball strikeout for Whitney Gillespie. Ariola struggling to stay through this, taking her first steps towards first base. Instead of coming right back up the middle, she'll be recorded as the first out. And over. 4-3. Second out of the inning. Here's Lovey Lopez. Single back in the third. And good off speed offering from Gillespie. We saw our dad, Jeff, in the stands earlier. And the reaction on her face after the fact, knowing she should not have swung. <laughs> Whitney Gillespie seems to have the seventh inning pickup out of the way and coming right back at Oregon State this inning. Over to Gillespie. One, two, three. So now she just needs some love from her offense. Come back with us here from Auburn, Alabama. Well, Jacksonville State has done their job all season long with winning in extra innings. The last one coming in the opening game of the Ohio Valley conference tournament against SIU Edwardsville. They were pushed in eight innings and won that one three to two. Go all the way back to 2014. That's how long it's been since they dropped one in extra innings. They've been perfect. Let's see if that streak can continue here with their season on the line. Now, because of this change of speed that Mira Nelson has brought to the circle, we're seeing that the toe touch or stride of the Gamecocks is a little bit late. If they want to be successful, they've got to get to that stride foot sooner so they can get their barrel through the zone. Our 
We're seeing some emotion from Nelson in the circle. Couple of smiles. Big moment for the freshman. Looking to carry her team and shut out these Gamecocks the rest of the way is. But I would have to counter that with the emotion that I see in the Gamecock dugout. Everyone on the fence, everybody yelling. And it's because the Gamecock head is looking over. Outside the dugout, mind Outside you. No props in postseason play. That rule came out last year. And being able to keep that Gamecock head handy, sitting on the tee, looking over the Gamecocks. This Gamecock team started out the season 9 and 13. Played a tough non-conference schedule. Foul back from Woodruff. And went on to win 32 of their last 35 games. I love the fight right now of Woodruff in the box, not wanting to relinquish. Holding tight to that one and breaks it through the five, six hole to lead it off. Base hit for Emily Woodruff. And that's the kind of fight you have to have in a leadoff batter, a hard shot in the five, six hole off the bat of Emily Woodruff. She would not give up. Absolutely tattooed in this five, six hole, nothing that anyone can do. Lovey Lopez can simply hold it up and bring it back in. Just trying to move the runner on base. Woodruff, eight stolen bases, which leads the team. And trying to implement the pass the bat mentality of Coach McGinnis. But talking to Coach McGinnis, she said, look, our team really doesn't have any kind of short game threat. We don't really have a ton of speed on the bases. So we're going to have to hit if we want to win. Pop that one up. Fouling out of play for Dennis. Dennis, one of the seniors, knowing that this could be her last game unless they produce and put a run up on the board to win this. Dennis writing a letter to give her teammates a little bit of extra incentive to go ahead and push ahead. She's got two singles today. Can she come up with another base hit here? Remember, it was Jacksonville State who had an golden opportunity to close out this game last inning and had runners at first and second no out but Gamecox could not advance past third base two for 18 overall in this regional with runners in scoring position Left 12 on base today and a strikeout for Ella Dennis. Here Nelson continuing to roll in the circles, changing it up. And the ball is elevated a little bit through the zone, but that really was a belt high pitch that could have been tattooed. She started below it though with her barrel and unable to catch up out in front of the plate. She'll be recorded as an out. Well, here's a young lady who doesn't strike out very often. The hit and run is on, and it works to perfection. Bullock, great execution. And that goes to show you do not have to tattoo a ball to be recorded as a base hit. This ball just gets over the head of Langloy at third. It ricochets off the glove of Ariola. And runners now will be at first and second base with one out. A key opportunity with a runner in scoring position for Taylor Swan. Fifteen chances. Just two runs with runners in scoring position. Gamecocks can strike here and in this ball game. The winner of this one 
will play upstate. Just about 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one. So a quick turnaround, kind of reminiscent of travel ball days for many of these young ladies. And the thing that plays into it is Upstate has had quite a while to rest, recuperate, and be ready to play again. The winner of this game will have been playing softball for about two and a half hours and have to come right back and try to win again. Another strikeout, so Mira Nelson, since coming in, has struck out four batters. <laughs> Along with Jenny Dalton Hill, I'm Tiffany Green here from the Auburn Regional. It's win or go home for one of these teams. Oregon State able to tie up the ball game in the seventh inning after the Gamecocks held tight to a two nothing lead. All the way into the seventh, the Gamecocks had a golden opportunity to finish it off last inning, but unable to do so. Another chance here. Caitlin Sapp with her first at bat. We saw her in the defensive change. Came in at third base. A big cut for McGuire. She's known as a free swinger, but unless she's able to stay controlled and stay off that rise ball, these runners are going to stay put. We're going to have to flip over to the bottom of the inning. She's got to be able to stay on top of the rise ball and stay off anything out of the zone. Instead, she chases. Five strikeouts for the freshman, Mira Nelson. And four, five, six on the way. It's Nelson who's looked strong in the circle. She sits down the Gamecocks. Two runs apiece as we move to the top of the ninth inning. Just four hits given up by Whitney Gillespie. But those two runs coming in the seventh inning to take this one to extras. Whitney Gillespie, we saw it happen to her and the first game on yesterday. And again, after pitching a very good game, you see 15 ground outs, no fly balls, and nine strikeouts. But her defense kind of let her down in that seventh inning. And that's how Oregon State was able to work their way into this one. You, you, and the song playing yeah. in the stadium right now, we're not going to take it. And she's saying that in the, in the circle, we're not going to take it. And, but it comes down to more than just being in the circle. They have to produce at the plate right now, struggling to push anything across. And you got to think, just because of the length of this ball game and the short turnaround time until the next, whichever team faces USC Upstate, we have some, some tired legs a little bit. Well, and you talked in the last game with Auburn how they try to tire out the legs of the pitchers before they head into a game. I don't think this is exactly what he meant by tiring out her legs. <laughs> and they all got a chance to visit the kinesiology lab here in Auburn University. More analytics that one can have, the better just to see how the body moves, reacts, and such. Only one hit from the four, five, six batters, and that came off the bat of Natalie Hampton back in the sixth inning. Natalie Hampton started that go-ahead inning in the seventh as the leadoff batter. Looking to do it again, trying to become the first base runner of the inning and push a run around and force the Gamecocks to answer. Right now, sitting with a tie score, 
in the ninth inning. A little free softball for the fans at the field and for you at home. This is postseason softball. And what it really comes down to is this is elimination day. Mm -hmm. So both of these teams playing to not go home. Jacksonville State traveled just two hours here. Oregon State came across a couple of time zone and 2,000. 100 miles or more for the Beavers out of Corvallis. I want to send a note down to Natalie Hampton. Let her know she does not need to hit it off her leg anymore. Let's go ahead and find some fair territory. Start this inning off. Whitney Gillespie has been able to go the distance thus far for the Gamecocks. They have ridden her arm throughout this regional. The 2-2. And again, Chambers not trying to poke away at it. And another single for Natalie Hampton, much like the seventh inning. And another ball down the first baseline. A great hit by Hampton, very reminiscent of her last time at bat. A single into right field. Chambers unable to move and get in front of this. And Hampton will start us off at first base. It's Madison Anthony's turn. She's walked and scored a run. Her last time up in the seventh inning during the rally for Oregon State, she walked. Was this one into right field, a fly ball, and underneath it is Dennis. So Hampton stays at first, and Langlois comes up to the plate. Unsuccessful in her two, two first at bat, sacrificed to move runners over in her last at bat, now needing a base hit. If you can believe that, as that's a strike from Gillespie off speed, that was the first fly out of the game off the sophomore. Well, and as a drop ball pitcher gets tired, her spin will not be as tight, meaning the ball will not drop off the table. Now sitting at over 100 pitches, Gillespie throwing yesterday as well. Her spin may not be as tight. This ball elevated in the zone will not be breaking down as hard. Grounder over to second, gets the lead runner. The 4-6 put out. And Hampton chopped back to the bench. Gillespie threw 122 pitches on yesterday. 10 less than today. Make it nine less now. In two less innings. So she has been very productive in the circle, but it's been run production that has prevented this game from being over. Each team averaging five runs a game during the season. Able to turn on that ball, take it down the line. That's been the place where most of the singles have happened in these later innings. In that 3-4 hole and straight down the first baseline. 
Right now, Gillespie trying to go ahead and induce another ground ball out to finish out this half of the inning. Well, Everett has had her success against Gillespie, two for three. She was responsible for the two-run single to tie up the ball game in the seventh, and you see her taking good cuts here. The thing that's hard as a pitcher is once someone has been through the lineup, this being her fourth time seeing her, she knows what she's throwing, and she's been successful twice. This one goes foul. Jenny has a former power hitter. I think I might ask you to run down and suit up. I'm not gonna say that you put on any particular color of the uniform, but And with 3-2 with two and two outs, the runner will be in motion, and a big swing should be coming out of Everett, but she has to stay on something that's in the zone. And there, we, there it was. And that's the kind of swing you want on a 3-2 count, knowing that she doesn't want to walk her. This pitch we have not seen be up in the zone very often today. As a drop ball pitcher, she has lived around the knees. But as she gets tired, this ball will be elevated. To be successful off of Gillespie, you have to be able to keep your hands inside and swing through a drop ball that could hang. Hung it up there. And that does it for the inning. So a runner stranded for the Beavers. But that ends the inning on the fly ball to center field. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth. Well, Jacksonville State had the 2 nothing lead going into the seventh inning, but a almost deja vu for the Gamecocks as they imploded in the seventh inning. And two runs come across. Alicia Everett pretty happy about that as they tied the ball game and pushed it to extra innings. Whitney Gillespie has been tough in the circle. And she's on deck as Stephanie Lewis leads it off here for the Gamecocks. And in the seventh inning, they did have an opportunity to go ahead and win it. A single off of Lewis pushed runners around. They're unable to come up and be productive with a run. We are here in the ninth. And you got to start to think and question how long can Gillespie go in the circle? Taylor West and Casey Ackenberger, the other two pitchers on this staff. And so a fly out. We'll go ahead and record the first out of the inning. Stephanie Lewis underneath that one, driving it over to foul territory. The first out of the inning will be recorded. So here is Gillespie. She's got eight home runs on the season. She homered in the conference tournament to help her earn MVP honors. She can be the real MVP here. And she can drive this one. She didn't go around, says the first base umpire, Cody Little. And this ball elevated out of the zone. She keeps her hands back. Luckily, the umpire crew does not have replay, so it'll go down as a ball. Nice cut there, one and two to Gillespie. Remember she had shoulder surgery in the summer on her throwing side. And she has provided a great presence in the circle for the Gamecocks during this regional tournament. You wonder how much more juice she has in that arm to be able to come in and throw extra innings. She's the go-to for Coach McGinnis. 
but they've got another game if they can win. And a strikeout for Mira Nelson. That's number six for the freshman, well over 200 after being in this tournament. And known for her rise ball, this ball comes up, elevated in the zone as she takes her eye off the pitch. She will swing underneath and record out number two. 205 for the season. You think about the, the freshman coming out of the Pac-12. Placed out of Oregon. Karen Alvello from Washington. And 0-2 count with two down for Leah Chambers. Leela Chambers. And back-to-back -back strikeouts for Mira Nelson. Tip inning coming up. Get excited. Come back with us. USC Upstate awaiting the winner of this one. Morgan State tied it up in the top of the seventh inning. And well, yesterday yielded some pretty cool headlines. A couple of no-hitters being thrown. Jessica Burroughs out of Florida State. And of course, UCLA's own Joanna Grauer. And for her, she had a perfect game. Lost it after six and two-thirds inning with a walk. The South Southeastern Conference came out with a resounding 10 and 1 record to open the NCAA tournament. Five coming by way of shutouts. And Whitney Gillespie, over 120 pitches in this game alone. Slow grounder and just in time, the first base. Bullock throws out. Schaefer. And that's where it's hard for a left-handed second baseman to be able to make the foot switch, flip around and get the out, but a good job by Jordan Bullock to go ahead and record out number one. Joseph Garcia shows bunt pulls back, ball one. Looking around the NCAA tournament, fouled that one off. We've got Oregon State, one of three teams representing the Pac-12. Utah. Team thus Utah and Washington from the West Coast advancing to the regional final Along with Arizona, UCLA. Pac 12 doing a great job of representing SEC teams as well here in this region. Auburn has advanced to the final game tomorrow. Many of those Auburn Tigers sitting in the stands, the coaching staff in the front row, Coach Clint Myers waking, making his way down the grandstand. Son Corey right there, the assistant to his father. And strike out for Garcia. So Gillespie now in double digits with K's. She's fan 10 Beavers batters.
And what the crowd is arguing is that on this bunt that Ariola tried to lay down, the crowd believed that she was out of the box when it touched her. She lays it down and continues on to first base. Home plate umpire David Irwin saying no, she was in the box. Coach Jana McGinnis going to come out and argue, saying there's no way she was out of the box. And this late in the game, every pitch out of Whitney Gillespie's arm matters. And so right now, David Irwin giving a warning to Coach McGinnis. And we have a chance to you know, meet with Coach McGinnis, and she's one of those women who's just so even keeled, so kind. Yeah, but the beast's going to come out of anybody <laughs> when it's the 10th inning of a win or go home game. And right now, Gillespie pulling everybody to the circle, getting everybody rallied. There's two outs. And right now, Gillespie needing to come in and get this out, get the game po Gamecocks back in the dugout. I believe someone in the Gamecocks dugout yelled out something. It wasn't Coach McGinnis. Hey, emotions, emotion. At this point of the game, emotions are going to be high, especially in a win or go home game. But right now, we have not seen enough emotion throughout this game. Now, people starting to get a little bit more invested. I was going to say, we were starving for it. You were asking for it, egging it on. We saw it very late in this ball game. And Gillespie <laughs> really wanted that one, trying to do the one-two step trot off. And she's done it a couple times during this game, the crowd trying to help her out. This one nips the corner, but not according to home plate umpire. This one will come across, try to be sold by Taylor Sloan behind the plate. The two-step, the electric slide coming off the field. <laughs> But everybody wanting this game to go ahead and find a winner. Both being tested and pushed to their limits. Oregon State won a 10 inning ball game against Stanford back on April 3rd. And this is the longest that the Gamecocks have gone all season long in extra innings. One popped foul and out of play into the stands. The 2-2. Dirt blocked by Sloan, full count now. And that one called foul. David Irwin not very popular in the stands <laughs> behind the plate right now. <laughs> No, definitely not. But he's make that was the right call. They can't be mad at him for that one. I guess they can be. <laughs> <laughs> and she went around, throws it over to first. And that's the third out. We're coming back right here to Auburn, Alabama. Gamecocks, what do they have left in them? We'll see when you come back. Times in Auburn, Alabama. We are loving it here in extra innings. Oregon State and Jacksonville State, neither of these teams want to go home as we're tied at two apiece. Since Mira Nelson has come into the ball game, well, she has shut down the Jacksonville State batters. And she came in just in time with that rise ball. A different look for the Gamecocks unable to make an adjustment, swinging through on rise balls through the zone. The Gamecocks need to stay off that pitch and stay above one at the belt. She had just three strikeouts on yesterday against USC Upstate, allowed five hits and five earned runs. Much different story here today. 
Anna Chisholm will look to start things off at the plate. Eight thirty Eastern, seven thirty Central Time here from the Plains in Auburn, Alabama, along with Jenny Dalton Hill, Tiffany Green, and we saw the Rally Cups come out for the Gamecocks earlier in this one, getting very creative, a work of art, if you will. Knowing that props are not allowed in the dugout in postseason play, the Gamecocks need to pull out the Cups again to get another run across the board and come away with the win. Some of the Auburn Tigers were sitting just in front of our booth, including Jade Rhodes as Chisholm strikes out. Just getting a chance to take in some softball. And this ball will ride away from Chisholm. Knowing as the outside pitch comes in, you've got to be able to sit back, allow that ball to hit your front hip to drive through the other way, unable to do so. Well, Jana McGinnis asked her team not to back down on yesterday against Auburn. That's the second out of the inning. She's going to demand more of that from them as Ella Dennis has done the same. She says, I haven't asked much of you, but this weekend I just want you to commit yourselves. And right now needing to be committed both in the circle and defense and now at the plate. And Tiffany, this is who I'd like to have hitting in this situation for me. A big hitter like Ella Dennis, a senior with her season riding on the line with this game right here. Out of the Huntsville, Alabama area. She was the player of the year in her conference. Leads the team in batting average. See if she can get a board with two outs. Good crack there. Nine strikeouts for Mira Nelson. She has dominated in the circle. Now can she be backed up by her Beavers? The order about to come up and Oregon State produce. We saw rain move through the area at the start of the day in our first game. Nice 75 degree breeze moving through the ballpark. You see the flags flowing just a little bit. Smiles, we're having a good time here. As neither of these teams trying to finish out the season. They want to keep playing, and only one can do so. Morgan State tied it up at two all after the Gamecocks had a two nothing lead. And my question is, even if the Gamecocks do come away with this win, in this game, the next game will start 30 minutes from the conclusion of this game. Will Gillespie be able to come back and throw in the next game? She's sitting at almost 140 pitches today, 122 in yesterday's game against Auburn. Will she be able to go again? Well, Coach McGinnis does have a couple of more pitchers that she can go to again if the Gamecocks are able to move on and Taylor West and Casey Ackenberger. Nice diving attempt from Jordan Bullock, but the leadoff batter and the Beavers is on base. Shelby Weeks with the base hit. And that's great placement because that is the glove side of Jordan Bullock. Just punching this ball up the middle past the diving Bullock will give Oregon State a lead off base runner. So no outs and an opportunity for Oregon State.
Lovey Lopez out of Santa Fe Springs, California. Single then doubled one yesterday. Came up with a single back in the third inning of this one, which feels like ages ago. And finally, a little bit of short game. That's what we have been not seeing so far. Manufacture a run. That's really the name of the game for Laura Berg, a short gamer for herself when she played ball, now needing to just find a way to push one run across. She had the luxury of speed, but that's what she wants to see from her group. This one pops up and able to catch it is Caitlin Sapp. So the sacrifice attempt gone awry for the Beavers, and it's one away. And that is a missed opportunity for Oregon State. Being able to move over Shelby Weeks. Because with Natalie Hampton coming up, she has had a single in each of her last two at bats. After striking out her first two against Whitney Gillespie, she started to figure things out a little bit. Led the rally that started off in the seventh inning. And that's a big hack for Natalie Hampton, but that's how she's gotten it done the past two times up, driving the ball down the first baseline past Leela Chambers. A ball there will advance Shelby Weeks all the way to third base if she can do it again. Talk about needing some small ball. Oregon State has had 16 sacrifices all season long. So while they may have practiced it, not necessarily executed in game situations. And that's actually an area I was talking with Coach Woodard for Auburn before the first game, which feels like 10 years ago at this point. <laughs> but before that game, he talked about how there is a lack of small ball being played in our game at this time. And this one popped up. Two down. Well, we saw this very thing happen to Jacksonville State when they had a chance to finish this ball game. They got the lead runners on, but were unable to play to run. And that happened in the bottom of the seventh. And taking off is Shelby Weeks, and good pickup there from. Anna Chisholm, so the runner in scoring position, and Weeks with her ninth stolen base of the season. Got to be gunned down by Sloan. Not in time. And a great play by Sloan to come up with this ball and go ahead and go for the throw. A great position. I thought she did nick the, nick the runner. And Dennis is there for the third out. More to come here from Auburn, Alabama. Stay with us. This is compelling softball, compelling television. How about it? From the Auburn Regional, Oregon State, Jacksonville State, moving into the bottom of 11th, tied at two. Whitney Gillespie, She's done her job in the circle, matching up against Mira Nelson, who came in in the seventh inning. Between them, a combination of 20 strikeouts between the two youngsters. And Gillespie has been magical in the circle. Only one hiccup in the bottom of the seventh inning, allowing two runs to tie it up. Jordan Bullock starts things off. See if she's able to figure out Mira Nelson and if she can get on base, was able to do so single. The last time up, in fact, she's reached base every at bat here today. Three singles, two walks. So this is the perfect batter to have up. She's seeing the ball well. She knows her zone and a lead off batter on base can be the difference between a win and a loss here. Yeah. 
and getting on base hasn't really been the problem today. It's been the run production that has been sitting back and not being productive. So with runners in scoring position, that's been the problem. Right now, needing a base runner to start things off. Pops this one back in foul. Still cheers and jeers from the dugout for the Gamecocks. Got a little hat, helmet to the back. How about that? 14 left on base. So you see all the opportunities squandered by the Gamecocks here tonight. Mira Nelson only throwing half the innings. Coming in after Bev Miller. But with that ball up in the zone being effective at getting the Gamecocks out. And another example right there. So double digit strikeouts for both of these pitchers, 10 for Mira Nelson. And as we go down the stretch in the postseason, you have to be able to make adjustments between at bats. And right now, it does not seem like the Gamecocks are able to lay off that rise ball. It is so hard when the ball is in your eyes. It looks big and you think you can get a piece, but as it rises through the zone, you are unable to catch up with it. And if it does not result in a strikeout, more often than not, it's a pop-up. Well, no matter who wins this one, if you're the pitching coaches for both of these teams, you've got to feel good because you have a freshman and a sophomore in the circle there for Gillespie going the distance. Marcy Green was all smiles because Mira Nelson has struck out 10 of the 13 batters she has faced, or rather 13 outs, excuse me, here today. USC Upstate's like, you, you want us to leave? You want us, you want us to go? What do, you, what do you want us to do? They say, let's play. <laughs> You know, when you lose the first game of the day, you do come back hungry, knowing that you're playing a loser bracket game, knowing that you have to play back to back games is so hard for either of these teams. It's going to be a long night. And this one driven deep and to the wall. A stand up double from Taylor Sloan and you see the emotion coming out of the junior third baseman. That's the first extra base hit of this game. And this ball stays away from Sloan, but she allows it to travel and goes the other way, falling, letting the ball fall between both Garcia and Lopez in the outfield. A little bit of a fist pump for the first extra base hit of the game. Her eighth double of the season, Caitlin Sapp. With four RBI, takes a cut there. And it's the rise ball. That's been their nemesis, staying off of it or staying above it in their swing. They have to make an adjustment. If you're going to swing, you've got to stay on top of the ball. Lays off of that one. And Schaefer keeps that out in front. We begged for emotion and energy as this game has gone on. We just didn't think it would it. take 11 innings yeah. to get it. <laughs> I don't think the fans or the players did either. USC Upstate anxiously awaiting the winner of this one. Auburn took care of the Spartans earlier today. Even Upstate is starting to cheer, wanting to get something <laughs> going. Instead, a strikeout, two down. Mira Nelson looking very, very confident in the circle. Two for 18 with runners in scoring position for the Gamecocks. So many opportunities for this JSU team. And they've had the opportunity with two outs. 12 chances successful in one attempt. And pop. 
locked up. We'll keep this party going from the Auburn Regional. Neither team giving in. We've got more. Top of the 12th on the way. Well, after the 11th inning, this is officially the longest game in Jacksonville State history. And still in the circle is Whitney Gillespie. And she's a trooper for sure. Pitched all 12 innings thus far for the Gamecocks. But when you are this invested in a game, you do not want to give the ball up. And right now, Whitney Gillespie not needing to. She has been so effective through 11 innings. She does sit at 150 pitches. She threw last night against Auburn, throwing 122 pitches. And the keynote that in that stat is the fact that in the offseason over the summer, she had shoulder surgery. So not only is she coming in strong, but she's coming in absolutely ready to go. Christy Langlois. First pitch swinging right back to Gillespie, one down. And that's exactly the kind of at bat that Gillespie would like. One pitch at bats will save her. Not what Oregon State is hoping for in order to be able to pull off a win here in this game. Jenny, from your playing days, do you remember going to extra innings and tussling this long with an opponent? I remember big games against UCLA in conference. I remember being at UCLA Stadium, going extra innings against them. And you know what won it? A home run. <laughs> Was it off your bat? Ooh. No. Okay. Leah Bratz came up with the big home run. She was a freshman that year. Ended it. Not in walk-off fashion. We were away. Had to hold him for three more outs. But right now, it looks like a home run is going to have to be the thing that ends it here as well. That one going in for a strike for Gillespie. You mentioned the fact that she had shoulder surgery in the summer, made her first appearance back on March 8th, just before the start of conference play after missing the first 18 games of the season. The team going nine and 13 without her upon her return. Went 26 and 0 in league play. Just one of three Division I teams to go undefeated in their conference this season. He's broken a two year absence to make it back to regionals. Morgan State, last time they were here it was 2013 with their head coach, Laura Bird. And Bird, interesting note about her, you hit me to this one prior to coaching. She was a police officer with the LAPD. Don't let the size fool you. She's a beat cop. Oh, she's a tough nugget. I tell <laughs> you what, you do not want to meet that girl in a bad mood because she can take it to you. There's no other way you can describe it because you don't win three gold medals, have four Olympic gold medals, and not be a fighter. Wings that one fouls Everett, three and two. Gillespie's father, Jeff, sitting up and watching, knowing what rides on the line, an opportunity to watch his daughter play for seven more innings or a short trip back home. Well, this is an elimination game. It'll be the end of the road for one of these teams.
as Everett is fighting in this at bat. Just foul and pass the glove of Chambers. And that ball down the line has been the thing that has been the nemesis for the Gamecocks. Popped up and just out of play. And so the ball's needing to be changed out. Go ahead and take a moment to change him out. Give Gillespie a moment in the circle. Upstate just snacking in the stands, chomping at the bit, waiting for their opportunity to take the field once more. Well, we've got Auburn sitting down in front of us. They've been bringing up some treats that look so tasty. <laughs> they want to share. If you're listening in, hey, the booth would like some of that funnel cake. That funnel cake. <laughs> we got our eyes on that. We're watching it. Jade Rhodes, I got my eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were talking to you, Jade, uh-huh. I saw that funnel cake. <laughs> <laughs> and a good play by the first baseman, Chambers. Two away. Able to keep that one in front, comes up with a big out, two out for Jacksonville State. pitch by Gillespie this deep in the game 166 pitches in still able to locate that drop ball a great pitch by Gillespie hitting the outside corner a good frame by Taylor Sloan and right back to Gillespie she recorded two of the three outs and she will lead things off in the bottom of the 12th come back with us We've got more. About the assists from the crowd, Jade Rhodes, kind enough to share her funnel cake, give us a sugar rush as we move here to the bottom of the 12th inning. It was nice and tasty. Yeah, what's this wee business? I didn't get a bite. <laughs> you didn't grab. Yeah. You gotta be aggressive, right? That's right. You want the win, you gotta go for it. That's right. And Both. right now, that's what the Gamecocks need to do. Come out and grab what they want. Nice tie in there, Gillespie swinging at the first pitch. Gillespie wanting this game to get over, knowing what rides on the line, another seven innings of ball to push till tomorrow, but right now throwing so well in the circle, needing to come up with a base hit. It's almost like we're entering almost a full second game. The longest game in NCAA softball history between Creighton and Utah in the WAC tournament. 25 innings. I'm sure both these teams hopeful that it doesn't take that long to determine the winner of this one. And popped up. For the first out, Schaefer catches that one. Joe Evans now at Texas A&M. Was the coach at Creighton for the Blue Jays at that time. Texas A&M losing their opening game. The only SEC team to lose the opening round game. Losing to Texas. 
five to nothing. The interesting stat in that one, all five of those runs came on solo home runs. Right now, looking for a solo home run to finish this one off. Is Leela Chambers, she's got five on the year. Not only does she have five on the air, but she had two in the conference tournament happening just a week ago. So she has really been seeing the ball well as of late. A quick update to Texas A&M, the number 16 overall seed in the tournament. They came back to win nine to three in the elimination game against Texas. And this one popped high and in the right center. Two down. Now they'll face ULL in the regional final. On tomorrow, the Raging Cajuns moving on, and boy, a lot of home runs in that bracket between A&M, Texas, and the University of Louisiana Lafayette. Interestingly enough, Boston able to hit a home run, so each with double-digit home runs or more. Chasing that one. Is Chisholm one and one? on the ground trying to catch him napping and does so so a two out single for Anna Chisholm and that's the short game we have been missing in this contest it needs to happen though prior to two outs a great drag bunt location of this not necessarily where it was supposed to be but because it caught Madison Anthony off guard she's unable to get all the way over there and Chisholm will be on first base. Woodruff turns on that one foul. Chisholm out of St. Louis, Missouri with six stolen bases on the year. Woodruff had a single in this game back in the eighth inning in the 5-6 hole. A ball there would advance Chisholm. She probably would not be able to advance to third unless the ball got all the way to the wall. But the outfield is playing deep. It has the height and the distance. However, it's a little too far to the left. She's ready to get this one over. Low. Two hundred and ten strikeouts on the season for Mira Nelson. Eleven of them coming today. And we've talked about the pitch count of Whitney Gillespie, but remember, yesterday Mira Nelson did throw as well. 147 pitches yesterday, now nearing the century mark in this game as well. Ball four. So now, that gives 
the senior, Ella Dennis, an opportunity to drive home a run. She had a chance to do this earlier in this game. Let's see if she can come through for a game, Cox, this time around. In just her last at bat, she was the third out of the inning, coming on a strikeout right now, looking to redeem herself, not only to come ahead and stay face, but to be able to win this game and force a game tonight. A big hack out of Dennis. She does have power. She can hit it out. Coach McGinnis tags her as the best hitter on the team. And she feasted all season long on conference pitching. Let's see if she can pull off a hit here off of Nelson. The thing that plays into Dennis's favor is the fact that, Mel that Nelson is an up ball pitcher. So if she can hit something flat, she can drive this to the outfield, but it has to hit a hole. It cannot be caught. With two outs, an elevated hit will not work. It has to be a single to push Chisholm around for the game winner. This one popped up. And we keep the party going. 17 left on base for Jacksonville State. These two teams say I can do it all night long. Come back with us. A little air guitar action from USC Upstate trying to stay loose. We had to challenge them at a dance off during the break. Everybody just trying to Stay loose for this one because we've got another one coming up. Well, notice they had to go to air guitar because obviously <laughs> the dance moves in the booth a little too much to handle <laughs> for USC Upstate. So just saying, the call is out. How about we seen the running man challenge, the dab by their head coach, Chris Hawkins. The whip. What else you got? The, the, -nay. the whip and nay nay from Ryan Rector. Yep. I'd like to just see a run. <laughs> we haven't had one of those since the seventh inning. Well, there's no time like the present. The bunt laid down, and that one, it's a foul ball. So good idea from Jessica Garcia. Rather, she's safe, excuse me. And what the home plate umpire was calling was there was no contact with her out of the box. So as that ball was going down, she did a high leg kick to try to stay out of the way. She will motor her way down and give Oregon State a base runner. The ball does come in close to her, but she gets herself out of the way. Home plate umpire calling no contact and a runner for Oregon State. She is speedy. So you're ready to run at any opportunity multi-sport athlete in high school. You see the 5'10 frame on her. Very good basketball player as well. Average 20 points and eight rebounds. At the high school level. And be aware right now with Jessica Garcia on first base, she is 11 for 13 and stolen bases on the year. She'll go ahead and put that wrist brace on just for protection as a slide in precaution. McKenna Ariola looking to play some small ball. Watches that one go just foul. A great move by Jacksonville State to be able to play that ball and let it spin. They would not have had her at first base, so a great job to let that one roll and let it play out. The ball down on the ground, avoided, and the spin takes it just beyond the line. Anticipating a bunt, a sacrifice from McKenna Areola. 
And the Gamecocks moving in. And Ariola has been unsuccessful all day with four strikeouts. Right now looking to move a runner. The count sits at three and one. She can bunt in this situation. And through, not through the infield as Anna Chisholm stops it, but back to back singles to start off this 13th inning. And it's because of the defensive shift that that ball goes down as a base hit because the infield was in and pulled to the bag up the middle. Anna Chisholm dives to stop it, but the wheels of Ariola finally coming through and makes it safely for her first time in this game. Shelby Weeks now with a runner in scoring position. She singled her last at bat and she moves the runners over with one out now at second and third. Textbook sacrifice from Weeks and Jessica Garcia who led off the inning with the single 60 feet away from scoring the go ahead run. high and tight to Lopez, ball two. A pressure-filled situation. We'll go ahead and have a little visit in the circle to calm things down with only one out right now. A sack fly will win this. Coach Berg gonna take an opportunity to talk to her hitter as well. Mark Weisner in the circle for the Gamecocks, the pitching coach. In his 20th season with the program and just trying to check on the status of his sophomore, Whitney Gillespie. She's gone the entire distance, 11 strikeouts, nearly a strikeout per inning. And this one and only giving up one walk. And do you make the pitching change here? As Gillespie has pitched the entire way. Remember, the winner of this game will have to play another here tonight. 30 minutes at the con after the conclusion of this game, the winner of this game will then play USC Upstate. Auburn advancing to the final game in the first game of today. They are undefeated in regional play. This, the first elimination game the next one coming 30 minutes after the conclusion of this game. And you know, if, if I'm Coach McGinnis for Jacksonville State, I don't take Whitney Gillespie out of this game. She has done nothing wrong. It's been short game that's, that's hurt them in this inning. So far, she's been able to keep Oregon State at bay with runners in scoring position. That has not happened very often in this game. Right now, I do not take the ball out of Whitney Gillespie's hands. I think she just needed to get a little rise and bag. She's nearing 300 pitches for this regional tournament. And a strike off the hands after that timeout. This is an elimination game, so the loser of this one ends their season here tonight. And just through the middle, that's the go-ahead run. Two are plated across, and the RBI single for Lovey Lopez. Here in the top of the 13th. Puts the Beavers on top 4-2. And this ball is just elevated a little bit, enough to be able to get her barrel through the zone. She drives it right back up the middle, over the head of the jumping Gillespie. And with runners on second and third, both will come around to score and push Oregon State up 4-2. Finally able to break the tie. 
beating of the chest, the emotion that we wanted to see all game long from the Beavers and big smiles from Lovey Lopez. She's four for nine in the regional. And Gillespie deserves and receives a big round of applause from the fans. What a great effort in outing for the sophomore. 300 pitches in this regional tournament. She's carried them and really been in every ball game so close to beating Auburn. And here Oregon State takes the lead in the top of the 13th, 4-2. Taylor West out of Anniston, Alabama gets the ball here in the top of the 13th with a runner on second base and one out. And this will be the first time we see West in this regional. She throws in the low 60s. She goes east to west and lives in the bottom of the zone. Second team all conference talks the win in the deciding game of the OVC championship round. She had a no hitter going through four innings. Tough act to follow from Whitney Gillespie, who had 19 innings pitched in this regional. 18 strikeouts while giving up 12 hits. And I love Gillespie right now, coming out of the dugout, trying to help West. That's a true teammate. And that's what McGinnis said of her players, the fact that they are Servants of the team, very humble, never above one another, and a great display of that. And as you pointed out, Gillespie coming out of the dugout. And to be another voice. And perhaps the most impressive part of Gillespie, just a sophomore. Mm -hmm. The maturity, not only in the circle, but also in the dugout. A lot to build on for Jana McGinnis. Just two seniors on this team could very well be playing in their last game in a Jacksonville State uniform. And this just nicks the bat of Natalie Hampton will go down as a strike. And a strikeout for the first batter she faces in Taylor Wesson. Whitney Gillespie pumped up about it. And this pitch on the outside part of the plate, West able to bring it outside, that screwball coming off the plate. Too much for Hampton to catch up to. Great pitch by West for the out. Strike one to Madison Anthony. And look at that emotion. That's exactly what you want coming out of your dugout, especially coming out of the circle. I'm loving Whitney Gillespie right now.
So Lovey Lopez broke the tie with a two run single to give the Beavers a 4 2 cushion. part of center field and that's the third out the Beavers bringing it here the sophomore coming through up the middle to RBI Beavers on top 4-2 A lot of respect for that young lady in Whitney Gillespie. She has pitched her heart out this weekend and has given her team an opportunity to win. On the other side here, Nelson entered the circle in the seventh inning. And since coming in, she's pitched six innings, not given up a run, and sat down 11 batters by strikeout. And 147 pitches last night, sitting at 100 right now. Both these pitchers throwing their hearts out, trying to extend their season. Mira yeah. Nelson showing a smile in the circle, a little bit more emotion than we've seen just took two runs, right? Yep. That always helps. Is trailing back it was McKenna Ariola, and at second base is Jordan Bullock off the drop. And that's a great heads up play for Jordan Bullock to lead off, to be able to go ahead and quickly advance to second base on the miscue by Ariola. A fly ball that just seems to get away. You're taught early to catch with two hands, and the reason being, right there. So now the time run at the plate for Taylor Sloan. She's got just one home run on the season. So we saw the cups. Now we've got uh, potato chip bag on head. You gotta go with the chip bag. That's obviously the key <laughs> to scoring runs. You'd have to believe that if they do go ahead and tie this or go ahead, that chip bag's gonna be coming out again in the next game. <laughs> 
for sure. Very superstitious are any of the softball players, really athletes in general. And this one, Areola not able to tag her. Runner safe at first base. So a surge coming from the Gamecocks. Ariola cannot believe it. She says, I did tag her, Coach. Laura Berg will come out of the dugout to argue. But this high hop, a scary advancement. Ooh. Ariola unfortunately goes back for the tag. You have to sell that to the umpire on the first swipe. When you go back for the second swipe. No, she missed her. They don't believe that you touch her. So right now, a great opportunity for the Gamecocks to go ahead and come back and tie this game up with runners on first and third. So Sloan reaches on the fielder's choice. No outs. Caitlin Sapp has struck out both times up. Swing and a miss. game we have seen here tonight. And laying down the sacrifice so the runner will advance to second but no run comes across for the Gamecocks. No run may come across but now you have two runners in scoring position for the bat of Stephanie Lewis. This is just a straight sacrifice looking to advance the runner. The runner on third base was not trying to advance. It was not a squeeze or a safety squeeze. Big hit there and going to first base. So another run comes across for the Gamecocks. The first since the fifth inning. The tying run 60 feet away. Whitney Gillespie who has held the Gamecocks in this ball game with her performance in the circle. Now with the chance to tie it or end it. And you can't script it any better. Yeah. The heart and soul of this athlete, Whitney Gillespie, that's who I want to have the bat. The bat needs to be in her hands. Leave it up to her. 300 pitches in two days. Absolutely has earned the right to be the hitter to decide the end of this game. Winner stays alive and advances to the game following this win against USC Upstate. A loser will cap their season here in Auburn. Gritty performance in the circle from Gillespie. We saw her showing her support for her teammates from the dugout. Here we go. Yep, she drives it to the wall. Tie ball game. Whitney Gillespie saying, I'm going for two. Go, oh, baby. The MVP of this one thus far has to go to Whitney Gillespie. Huge! She does not want to go home. This one is absolutely laced into left field. A no doubter to the wall over the head of Lovey Lopez. There is nothing she can do but pick it up and try to get it in before. And now she advances to third base. On the wild pitch.
And the momentum has swung in the hands of the Gamecocks. Jana McGinnis giving a high five to the sophomore. She wants to make it. She wants a shot and a chance to keep this season going. Trying to will her teammate, Leela Chambers, who's up to bat, saying, this is your time, young lady. Chambers swings through that one. So we saw four runs total in the first 12 innings. In the 13th inning alone, four. Two strikes to Chambers. And Jacksonville State is one hit away from winning this game. They had the opportunity in the seventh to do it. Not able to produce. That's how he got to extras. And Chambers, ooh, so close staying off of that one. Tiffany, you cannot leave it in the hands of the umpire. Right now, stay aggressive around the zone with two strikes. You've got to take your future in your own hands. We got more coming. Woo! Let's celebrate and have a good time because Whitney Gillespie is certainly feeling it. She had the mojo working in the circle, and she does so when she steps up to the plate. The RBI double to score two runs and push this one to 14. Woo! Have a good time. Let's have a party. That's what's playing here at Jane B. Moore Field. Upstate, they might tire themselves out from all the dancing that they're doing just to stay loose, but Gamecocks feeling good. They tie up the ball game in the outfield. like, yeah, new life. You play two games, essentially. Yeah, two games, but guess what? If you win, you play 30 minutes later. This game will determine the next opponent, USC Upstate, waiting to play the winner of this game 30 minutes after its conclusion. And that game will go on as long as this game finishes by 11.29. Hopefully we're not here that long, ladies and gentlemen. But right now, heading into the 14th inning, you're looking at almost two complete games of softball right here. This is what the postseason is all about in the NCAA tournament. Teams have already been el eliminated throughout the country. But Oregon State came all the way from Corvallis. They don't want to go home. They had been here since 2013. And for Jacksonville State, it's been a couple of years for them as well. Beavers at 30. 19 and one on the year. Coming out of Pac-12, Christy Langlois. Flies that one out to Dennison Wright. And Tiffany, we may be in the 14th inning, but this is the first time that any of these Oregon State hitters are seeing Taylor West just being brought in for the last two outs in the 13th inning. So right now, Taylor West has the advantage with Oregon State not knowing what she looks like at the plate. Go all the way back to the seventh inning when Alicia Everett tied up the ball game with a two-run single. And that's how we got to this extra innings affair. Then the 13th. Both put up two runs. And coming in to catch that one, a couple of fly balls and two outs for Oregon State. And the exact opposite look of what we get out of Gillespie on the mound, ground balls and strikeouts. Now the last two outs recorded by West coming in the air. Three of her four put outs of the Beavers have come by way of the fly out, struck out the first batter up. As Kayleen Schaefer fouls that one off. Yeah. 
I love the fact that the fans are just as dedicated to be here and take in some great softball all day long here from J.B. Moorefield. Well, we saw a change of the guard coming in about the seventh inning of this game with the fans expecting to see game three on the day, not knowing they'd see some extra softball. Upstate fans anxious to get the next one started. 30 minutes at the conclusion of this one. Ball strike two. Selfie time or maybe check in social media from the Spartans team. Ordering up a run? <laughs> well, you got what you wanted. Last inning. And just the fact that both of them scored two. One, two, three inning for Jacksonville State. They're coming up. Dieted two going into the 13th, and know your eyes aren't deceiving you as Oregon State jumps on and puts two across. Lovey Lopez comes in with a two-run single in the 13th, but then answered again by Gillespie, who had been pulled from the circle, but coming in as the DP, comes in to tie the game, and that's where we sit, tied at four in the bottom of the 14th. I'm gonna sing my song again. I always feel like somebody's watching me. That's right. Game cut. He's watching the field, not you. <laughs> That's okay. He's watching this great action. Knowing this is a winner go home game, he's looking to live for at least seven more innings, but not wanting it to be seven more in this game. That would break the record of. The Creighton-Utah game has the longest game history. 25 innings, looking to end this one in the 14th, hopefully. And the Chisholm can get it going. Swing and a miss. She had a single in her last time up. And that single is what led off the inning to score those two runs. You've got to love the fight of both of these teams. As soon as the sun set, the energy level raised. You wonder if it was just the heat that was keeping them at bay. Full count for Chisholm. And she's on. With the base on ball. A little bit of action in the bullpen. Ben Bev Miller, who threw the first half of this game, will go ahead and get back up in the bullpen. My chopper, Nelson goes to first, and that one gets past. Madison Anthony holding up is McGinnis. So playing it safe, runners at second and third. No outs for Jacksonville State. And that's a good call for Coach McGinnis, knowing there are no outs recorded. This ball is meant to be a sacrifice. But as Nelson comes up with it, she throws it away. This ball will trail into right field. Jordan. Madison Anthony unable to pull it out of the dirt. And now runners in scoring position for Jacksonville State. Three chances starting off with the senior in Ella Dennis. Calls a quick timeout. This is Dennis's eighth 
appearance at the plate. The lead off in the lineup for Jacksonville State. There's Anna Chisholm, the winning run, standing on third base. is able to keep this ball deep in her swing, driving it the other way. But Lovey Lopez looking for the out before she was able to secure the ball. Jacksonville State comes away with the win in the bottom of the 14th inning. Whitney Gillespie made it happen in the circle. And four hours and 10 minutes later, the Gamecocks come out victorious. The emotion out of Anna Chisholm and the Gamecocks. Whitney Gillespie, so excited. But their day is not over here at Jane B. Moore Field. Meanwhile, Oregon State wraps up their season with a record of 30, 20, and one. And after 14 innings, it's Jacksonville Upstate, rather Jacksonville State will finish face off against USC Upstate. It's been a long one. Help me folks here as they will play in just a little bit the winner of our next game will advance to tomorrow's regional final against Auburn. That game is set to start at 2.30 on Sunday. What a terrific ball game. Neither team wanting to give up or go home. Our final score, five to four, Jacksonville State. Gamecocks able to go the distance. This marathon game ends for Jenny Dalton Hill and our entire crew. Tiffany Green saying thanks and see you soon from Auburn. <laughs> <laughs>